going on, Vinyl Community? Welcome to another video with the Record Spinner. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a vinyl haul covering all the records I have acquired within the months of March and April of this year, 2019. This video was done in the same style as my previous uh, big vinyl haul, where I filmed uh, small clips of me showcasing the records as I receive them and editing them together into one video. Um, this will run a little bit in length, but if you guys dig this kind of stuff, please sit back, relax, and enjoy the latest finds. Alrighty, so we are going to kick this haul off with a big bang of colored vinyl. Uh, my best friend and I did a whole shopping day in the uh, Tom's River brick area of New Jersey. Uh, the first two I picked up at the FYE that was uh, within the Ocean County Mall in Tom's River. Um, saw them there, and of course I was aware of them. And... Um, I was very, very curious on them, so I figured I'd snag them while I could at the moment. And also, since now I am a employee of FYE again, I got my discount, which was very sweet. And um, I, I think I should mention these albums together under one umbrella. Uh, these are two albums by Alice Cooper. Uh, this is Zipper Catch a Skin, and this is Dada. Um, this came out in 82, this came out in 83. Uh, these two... Um, reside in the blackout period of Alice, where basically, due to the alcoholism and the drugs and everything, he has no recollection of writing or recording these albums. So that alone adds just a little bit of myth to these albums. I mean, I've heard of a couple tracks on box sets and compilations, but in terms of together as a whole, I have not sit down and listened to these. And I am very curious to see how they sound and where Alice was really getting at uh, because at this point I mean new wave and punk had really kind of had been riding the waves for a long uh, time in the early 80s and he was trying to kind of cash in on that with albums like flush the fashion and special forces so this kind of continues that trend sort of not saying that they're the same stylistically but he's trying to catch up with the times and um, yeah I am very curious to see how they sound uh, these were part of the um, back to the 80s campaign that Rhino did. Uh, so they are limited to how many copies, I don't know. Uh, Zipper Catches Skin is on a really nice piece of kind of like clear vinyl with black swirls. Kind of gives it a pretty interesting gray effect. And uh, Dada also comes on pull it out kind of like a uh, darkish orange marble vinyl which looks really cool when you get at the at, at like a good angle it like kind of illuminates it's kind of dark then it illuminates it's kind of cool I mean obviously that just involves sunlight that's not a given effect but it's pretty cool so there's that and then the other two um, records I'm going to show, I picked up at a Barnes & Noble in Brick. And um, I feel bad saying it because I used to work for Books A Million, but Barnes & Noble really has a thing going for them in terms of vinyl. Um, they get the exclusive pressings in, not just of like Harry Potter soundtracks and this and that, stuff that would cater to a book audience, but they cover you know, pretty much other musical artists across the board. Uh, but let's just say I did not expect myself to find a Barnes & Noble exclusive pressing of Ted Nugent Great Gonzos, the best of Ted Nugent. When I saw this and I saw the exclusive sticker on the loose shrink wrap, I am like, holy hell, why not? Um, it's the best of Nuge, what can I say? You get Cat Scratch Fever, Stranglehold, um... Wango Tango, it's it's all the early standards on one LP. Um, here is the back side, and we have a gatefold sleeve here of some photos of the Motor City Madman himself. And this exclusive pressing is pressed on a very vibrant, lovely piece of... It's marketed as gold vinyl, but it's kind of like a honey, yellowish kind of vinyl, which looks really cool has that old school epic label there and it looks absolutely stunning and 
Up next is another Barnes & Noble exclusive, and that is David Bowie's Heathen. Now, where I work at, at my FYE, we do have um, some colored variations of this album. Uh, Friday Music did put out some different variations, uh, but the prices are ri ridiculous. And even with my discount, it's just not justifiable. Uh, but the uh, Barnes Noble asking price I thought was absolutely justifiable considering that yeah it comes from Friday music they tend to overprice the product but then again it is exclusive so if anything that does run the risk of potentially overpricing it uh, but I thought that it was just about right considering what it is um, this came out back in 2002 uh, the big notable one on here is slow burn that's a great track then you get slip away which is a really nice but melancholy track afraid um, just a really, really great um, early 2000s Bowie album. Uh, the sleeve itself is wonderful. It's a um, triple gatefold sleeve. Rather impressive for uh, for a single LP album. Usually you would ex expect this with like multi-LP sets. And this exclusive pressing, uh, it was not marketed on the shrink wrap, uh, on the hype sticker, but this is kind of like on a... Uh, marbled white kind of vinyl so it's like solid white and then you kind of have like flecks of black in there as well which is really nice and i should mention too both this and the ted nugent record um are pressed at rti and they feel of excellent quality and that is why rti is perhaps one of the top best pressing plants in north america just pressing absolutely great product and I'm really glad that Friday Music uh, went ahead and stuck with them for pressing their product. But just absolutely great stuff. Good, good stuff. All right. Now we are getting to some Amazon finds now. Uh, these two albums I uh, picked up with my Discover cashback bonus. Uh, the first one that I'm going to show is one that I knew I was definitely going to pick up regardless of what my um, cashback was going to be. This was a definite you know, must have and just easy to place in my collection. And um, in general, this album that I'm gonna show first is an absolute early hard classic rock classic. I mean, if you are a, an appreciator of rock and metal, this is a must own in your collection. Uh, this is Deep Purple in Rock. Um, what can I say? You have Speed King, Child in Time, um, Into the Fire, Bloodsucker. I mean, this album, this album, along with Led Zeppelin's first album and Black Sabbath's first album, is the, like, holy trinity of what would become heavy metal. I mean, this is just a beautiful record. Now, you're probably wondering, Dylan, why didn't you have this album? I did. Um, if you remember, I did a vlog, um, a record store vlog, doing some trades and uh, finds. Um, I actually had a pressing of this album that I traded in at the shop. Um, I previously had a Friday music pressing uh, that was put out back in like 2010. And I had gotten that when I first started collecting. And that was all that was kind of out there in terms of new vinyl and like a newer pressing of this album that was on the market. And as my ears got more opened up to sound quality and such... It did not have the best sound to it, but then again, the way that this album is recorded is very kind of rough and ready. Um, and also the fact that the intro to Speed King was completely cut out and it just kind of started right when the band kicked in. That always kind of annoyed me later on, like once I actually got to listening to it. Um, and Rhino has gone ahead and reissued this album a couple of times, and this is the most recent reissue that came out, I believe, in January of this year. Uh, replicates the gatefold very nicely which looks really, really great. Um, mastered at half speed, which I think is a major benefit in an attempt to make this album just sound slightly better. I mean, not to say that this album sounds bad. It does, I mean, it sounds absolutely kick-ass, but just it has that recording technique to it that just makes it so hard and heavy and up in the front. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, mastered at half speed, and this is pressed on a very aptly purple colored vinyl which is really nice replicates the uh the olive green warner brothers label there and yes indeed the intro to speed king is on this so 
I am very excited to give this a spin and just a very worthy upgrade of a classic album that I think should be in everyone's collection. Just absolutely classic, Deep Purple and Rock. And up next is another album that I kind of had my eye on for a while, and it dropped to a really good price, and this was at around $12. And I was kind of waiting around on it because I kind of suspected that it was going to be at this price for a while, and I had a little bit of, um, of my cash back bonus left over, and I figured might as well use it to some extent. Uh, this is Waxahachie. Out in the Storm. And this is actually the first proper full-length album that I have of hers. I only have the Great uh, Thunder EP, which I picked up um, at the Courtney Barnett show that she was the um, opening act. Uh, Waxahachie, that is. Um, just by looking at the track list, there were songs that she played acoustically in her opening slot. But like, I listened to some of the samples uh, of this album, and it's just a really, really awesome, you know, old school kind of indie rock kind of sound. Uh, great melodies, great chord progressions. The instrumentation is spot on, and I'm really excited to dig deeper in with this album. And this also comes with a really nice poster. There's Waxa Hanchi there, or Katie as she's referred to. And then we also have a little insert side here which has all the lyrics so you can sing along to the songs as you listen to the album um it's on black vinyl i'm not going to show it because it's in the paper sleeve and i don't want to scuff it uh but when i investigated the vinyl itself i noticed that it was pressed to rti and um it was also mastered by ray janos so those two great factors alone and j with the fact that this was only a 12 dollars record it is essential value, and like I said, very excited to give this album a spin. Waxahachie, Out in the Storm. Alright, so here is something that I picked up from um, a Discog seller. Um, I noticed um, this particular release, it has been out for some time, always kind of going for a rather decent price, and I was like, okay, maybe one day later on down the road I'll snag it. Uh, but I just kind of noticed now that the prices are going up and up and up. So I kind of wanted to get this while I could. And I'm very glad that I did so. And I'll explain why I kind of held off on this for a couple of reasons. Uh, this is the Ramones uh, Sun Dragon Sessions. Uh, this right here is a Record Store Day 2018 uh, release. Um, this is indeed limited to um, 10,000 copies. I have number 6,130, and basically uh, this release here is the album Leave Home, but in rough mix format. Uh, the rough mixes uh, were released um, on CD in the Leave Home uh, 40th anniversary uh, set, which I do have, um, but at first when this was announced as part, as part of Record Store Day 2018, um, I kind of didn't really see the point in it, I hate to say, um, considering that I already had the anniversary version, and now I'm on the market for the original mix, I figured having um, this rough mix version would be a rather interesting way of hearing the album. And also, um, this is kind of more complete than the original Leave Home album because it features the song uh, Babysitter, uh, which was included on subsequent versions of the album. I think it replaced the song Carbona Not Glue uh, for um, for just the word Carbona used in the song title and not clearing it with the company Carbona, something along those lines. Uh, so it does feature that song, so it is kind of more complete, I guess you could say. Uh, comes in a die cut sleeve. So you see the Ramones seal right there in the inside. And then we have the record itself, which I'm going to be very careful taking it out because it is in a paper sleeve. And I'll showcase it. So here we have, I think this is the main side here, blue labels. And then we have the seal again, and it says Sun Dragon Sessions. So uh, overall, very, very pleased to um, have this in my collection. Uh, I love the Leave Home album, and I think just simply having this and hearing the differences between the original and the remix and stuff will be a, um, a rather interesting listen. And yeah, like I said, very looking forward to it. Ramones, Sun Dragon Sessions.
Okay, so here is a Discogs purchase that I made recently. Um, this turned out to be a rather interesting purchase. Um, let's just say what I ended up purchasing was not what I ultimately received, but what was sent to me, I guess by accident, um, I actually don't have in my collection, and this record is pretty pricey to begin with, so I was very happy to receive this for the price that I paid, which was 20 bucks. Um, it would have been nice to receive what I, like, the re the record that was listed on Discogs, but this is fine, you know, it'll do. Um, this is The Beatles, On Air, Live at the BBC, Volume 2. The record I had ordered that I thought I was going to be receiving was the first Live at the BBC. Uh, because that, for some reason, is just fetching a high price tag, and there was a listing for 20 bucks, and I was like, okay. But then, I got this, and I actually don't have this in my collection. Um, the BBC stuff, along with the anthologies, are some Beatle releases that I truly have been wanting for quite some time. Uh, so this compilation pretty much covers the rest of the BBC stuff that was not released on the first uh, BBC compilation. Um, whether this was done to just gather up whatever was left over or to extend the 50-year copyrights, um, regardless, this is a fun, fun collection of tracks, um, early Beatles classics, all kinds of cover tunes, um, just really sensational stuff. Uh, comes in a triple gatefold sleeve here, all kinds of various liner notes talking about the BBC and there's all kinds of pictures of the band at the time and it's a three record set come in these uh, printed inner sleeves with various pictures of the guys and then on the back sides uh, there's some little write-ups about each of like the individual songs it kind of goes into like some of the sessions I'll show off one of the records um, all the labels are pretty much the same throughout So we have the classic Apple label there and a white background. And then we have the Apple cut in half right there. And yeah, like I've said, uh, the BBC Beatles stuff is stuff that I have been really aiming to get for quite some time. And um, yeah, I mean, like I said, you know, what ended up not getting what I thought I would get but still received something that uh, definitely filled a hole in my uh, Beatles collection. So very, very happy to own it. Beatles On Air, live at the BBC, Volume 2. Alrighty, so now we are going to get to some Amazon price drops. Uh, so this one here, um, I noticed that it dropped in price rather, I would say, almost significantly um, for as long as it's been available. Um, dropped to around, what, the halfway uh, point was in terms of the average price and it's weird because after I purchased it the price just shot back up So it's kind of one of those traditional cases uh, And this is one that I've you know, I've been aware of and I just figured you know what why not you know why not give it a shot so this is uh, Last concert in Japan by Deep Purple. Uh, so this had come out after the band had broken up um after 1976, uh, but this album was recorded in 1975, towards the end of the year, uh, back when they were touring for the um, Come Taste the Band album, which does feature Tommy Bolin. Um, this is a, um, it's kind of a sad case with this show, because on the night that this show was recorded, and filmed as well for a Japanese-only film release, um, Tommy Bolin had went to sleep and like fell asleep on his arm and like completely could not play guitar efficiently for the night so he had to like detune his guitars because he can only make like a bar chord kind of like fingering position so his playing is not particularly up to par i mean because i have the dvd of the show and i can hear it and you know it's just it is what it is but uh john lord if anything um compensates with a lot of cool organ leads uh, but it does serve as a live document featuring the late great Tommy Bolin and um, and yeah This is a recent reissue that came out um, Similar to The copy of made in Japan that I got and they did a bunch of deep purple albums recently uh, pressed on Purple vinyl 
which looks very, very nice. And we, you also get a nice custom label, too, featuring the guys in the band, which I think was only done around the time frame that this album originally came out, which I believe was in 77, 78. So it was just a little bit after the band had broken up. Um, you also um, get a really cool back cover here with various pictures of the band. Good stuff. In terms of tracks, I mean, this album is full of killer stuff. You get the opening track, Burn, which is perhaps maybe one of the best show openers ever. Uh, you do get a dose of Come Taste the Band with Love Child and Lady Luck. Um, you also get Smoke on the Water, Highway Star, the, the classics. Uh, Woman from Tokyo, which is quite suitable because it was recorded in Japan. But, uh, but yeah, this was just a price drop that I thought was uh, definitely worth owning, and I'm very glad to have it in my collection. Deep Purple, last concert in Japan. Once again, more Amazon price drops. Sorry for the glare there, that's just the light coming from behind. Um, so these two albums I picked up on Amazon, uh, the price has dropped at a pretty decent point that I thought was justifiable for purchasing, just kind of sight on sea. And uh, two very different albums too, I must mention. Uh, the first one up is Green Day's Warning. Uh, this is kind of labeled as like a punk pop kind of album. Uh, you, you get tracks like Minority, the title track, Waiting, um, Macy's Day Parade, which is a really good track. Um, this was right before the band really broke through once again with American Idiot. Uh, so this was kind of, I guess, the, the closure of like, you know, the early portion of Green Day's career before they just really took off with American Idiot and everything that followed afterwards. Um, basic reissue. Uh, here's the back side. You do get a uh, insert, which has the credits and the guys on the back. And then we have all the lyrics on this side, so you can kind of sing along to the songs. Uh, I'm not going to take the vinyl out uh, because it's in a paper sleeve and I don't want to scuff it or risk scuffing it. Uh, but basically, whoops comes with uh, custom labels and then we also have another custom label on this side which looks very 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 nice I think I might need um, just a couple more Green Day albums until my Green Day collection is pretty much complete I say that because it's never complete there's always something out there and up next is a it's one of those classics um, I only have one album of his, and that is The Stranger. So I just kind of just gave that away. You can guess what this album is. Uh, this is Billy Joel's Piano Man. Uh, like I said, absolute classic record here. I uh, definitely want to get into some more Billy Joel, and I figured between The Stranger and this album, that would be a good, um, like a, a, a good couple first steps. Um, I do want to discover the, the uh, Turnstiles album, but I think all that's out there in terms of new pressings is a MoFi pressing, so if that ever drops, I'll pick that up. Uh, but no, you get the title track, um, Captain Jack, Ballad of Billy the Kid, absolutely great stuff. Uh, comes with a rather basic stripped down uh, insert of just the credits, all in black, and then you also get the vinyl itself which is on that classic red Columbia label. And uh, when I looked in the Dead Wax, uh, this is actually the music on vinyl pressing of this album. It didn't say anything on the cover that this was done by music on vinyl, uh, but they, they usually put out rather good product. And um, yeah, I have no doubts that this will be a very nice sounding pressing. And also very, very excited to give this album a spin for the very first time. Billy Joel's Piano Man. Alrighty, so today was a very, very good mail day. Um, all kinds of records I'm going to show you guys. Uh, the first one I'm going to show um, is one that I had ordered, I would say, about a week ago. Because um, it went uh, temporarily out of stock and it was at a low price. And considering the nature of the album, I was like, you know what? That's a fine price that I'll pay. And whenever it comes, it comes. But it turned out to come quicker than I suspected it would. Uh, this is Waxahachie Ivy Trip. Um, Waxahachie is an artist that I'm still growing my collection of. Um, she opened up for uh, Courtney Barnett when I saw her back in Philly in October of 2018. I was very impressed with her set, so I went out and bought her latest EP that was sold at the merch booth. Then, if you remember earlier in this haul, I got her latest full-length studio album, and this is the one that came out before that. 
Um, I love the album cover. It is very autumnal slash fall aesthetically pleasing. Here's the backside. Uh, just by looking at the uh, track list, there are some songs uh, on this album that were performed live when I saw her. So I'm sure that those songs will bear some uh, some resemblance once I listen to it. Comes with a printed inner sleeve uh, with the lyrics on one side, so you can sing along, and you get some various imagery there. Standard black vinyl um, on very basic, but then again, very classy looking. Um, all black, white text, center labels, which looks really, really nice. And I gotta say too, I mean, I can understand people might not like the risk of buying an album that they've never necessarily listened to fully before. Uh, but if you can get it for a good price and you have, and you like the artist in general, um, I think you're in good hands. And that's pretty much the case with this album. So I'm very excited to give this a listen once I get to it. Waxahachie's Ivy Trip. And up next is something that I picked up from uh, BullMoose.com. Um, they were expecting copies of this record uh, for some time. Uh, it was about two weeks ago when I placed the order for it, and so I just kind of waited around a little bit. And I found myself in the rabbit hole again of stereo and mono mixes, so I figured why not dig through another artist uh, catalog of mono and stereo mixes. Not necessarily stereo, because I already have the stereo catalog, uh, but with the mono mixes that are out there, and that is The Doors, Strange Days. Uh, this um, includes so many standout uh, Doors tracks here. You have Love Me Two Times, Moonlight Drive, People Are Strange, and When the Music's Over. I mean, this is just fantastic stuff. Uh, I would say this album, along with the first album, and L.A. Woman are contenders for, like, the, uh, the Doors' best album. Um, this mono version came out back in 2017 uh, to coincide with the album's 50th anniversary. And this was also the first time that the mono uh, version was um, released widespread um, as a standard vinyl release. And I'll explain a little bit of that uh, later on as I show this off. So you have a printed inner sleeve here, which comes with the album. Uh, you got the band photograph on one side, which in, in my eyes looks really, really nice compared to the stereo Rhino reissue that I have. Because it kind of looked a little bit more old school and grainy on that, whereas this one looks a little bit more photographic. And then you get the lyrics on this side. Comes with a polyline sleeve, and you have that classic gold Electra label. Now, when I was looking in the Dead Wax, I noticed that there was a matrix number that was crossed out, and then what was written is the catalog number for this particular version. And for you Doors vinyl fanatics know, um, they did a um, mono vinyl reissue of Strange Days for Record Store Day a couple years back, and it was mastered by Doug Sachs. So what they literally did was they took the metal parts from that reissue, crossed out that old matrix number, write the new one in, and just repressed it. So this is essentially the Record Store Day version, as far as I can tell. So for anyone that's expecting differences and mastering engineers or different product altogether, not necessarily the case. So it's the same thing. Uh, but nonetheless, I'm very glad to have a mono version of this album. And I've also heard some very, um, very good comments regarding the mono mix of this particular album. Not so much the first one, for, ver for some reason. Uh, but for this one, uh, a lot of people applaud it, and uh, I'm very excited to um, give this a spin and see what the mono version is like. So there you go, Doors, Strange Days. And last but not least, uh, this one I ordered fairly recently off of a Discog seller. Um, this was kind of a more impromptu buy. Um, I saw it <clears throat> at a decent price. Um, I was kind of eyeballing it for some time, kind of on and off. It wasn't like a priority kind of thing. It was just kind of one of those, let's just see what's available uh, kind of situations. And this time around, uh, right price, right time. Uh, this is Twisted Sister, Stay Hungry. Um, this is the breakthrough kind of album for them. Uh, features We're Not Gonna Take It, I Wanna Rock, the title track, Stay Hungry, uh, the Price, The Beast, I mean, this is just a great 80s, you know, hair metal album. And it's weird, um, on the day that I uh, ordered this, I was kind of on an 80s kick, so I guess I was feeling the uh, 
collecting blood in me because then I found myself looking up rat records and quiet riot so all depends on the taste of the day uh, this particular pressing uh, was done for Rhino's Rocktober campaign as you can tell on the uh, shrink wrap there this came out back I believe in 2016 and I don't know why I just you know passed up on it when it first came out comes with a uh, poster of the band Look at those guys. Crazy looking bunch. And I believe this pressing is limited to 2,000 or 2,500 copies. It's one or the other. And um, a seller had it for about like 20 bucks, which I thought was not bad considering how limited it is and also how amazing the vinyl looks. So check this out. So you get a printed inner sleeve here, uh, photos of the band and the credits, and then you get the lyrics on this side. I gotta be very, very careful because I don't want to mess up this album because it is beautiful looking. I'm sure you guys can probably see it already at this angle. So this is on pink and black marbled vinyl. And just this is just absolutely gorgeous. I'm going to give you guys some close-ups so you can see the detail on this. Just absolutely wonderful looking. And you got like flecks of white and like flecks of black and it looks purple in places uh just looks absolutely beautiful and i gotta say as of right now this is probably one of the most beautiful looking colored uh vinyl pressings in my collection so so very glad to own this and um yeah i don't have any twisted sister in my collection and i feel like if anything this might be the main go-to album i know there's other albums that they did like come out and play and you can't stop rock and roll but, uh, but I'm very satisfied to kick off my uh, Twisted Sister vinyl collection uh, with this album here, Stay Hungry. All right, so as you saw earlier, um, I had ordered the Beatles live at the BBC, only to be sent uh, on air live at the BBC Volume 2. Um, the Discog seller got back to me and was like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry, I had it completely mislisted, are you sure you're okay with this? And I was like... Yeah, why not? You know, I didn't have it in my collection. Wasn't necessarily on my radar, but it was a win-win kind of deal. And I'm like, hey, I'll take this, especially for the price I snagged it at. Um, but when you have that completest blood in you, you feel a little tempted. So I went ahead and found a seller that was selling the first Live at the BBC volume here. Um, found it at a rather decent price, uh, considering that this is kind of hard to come by within the States. Um, at a decent price, it's either fetching over $50 or sometimes three figures. It's crazy. Um, but the seller um, described it as still sealed, which indeed it was. Just had a small dent on the bottom, but honestly, considering the value and overall it's in great shape, I'm not going to complain. I'm just really happy to have this. Uh, this particular version of Live at the BBC is the um, remaster that was done in 2013, which was... At the same time that On Air was released back then, um, they took out all the crossfades on this because the original 94 version, um, it was all crossfaded, so all of the songs and the in-between banner kind of stand out on their own. And the original vinyl pressing came uh, with just two LPs, whereas this is expanded into three LPs, so the music kind of breathes a little bit more and it's not so crammed in. Um, it's packaged the same way as Volume 2. You have a uh, triple gatefold sleeve here with various liner notes and photos of the band. Just absolutely awesome. And also comes in, as you saw, like a very nice glossy finish. Um, I'm just going to showcase one of the three LPs, and it's pretty much the same format throughout the set. Um, one side of the inner sleeve includes a photo of the band. Great candid shots and then you also kind of get like a track by track breakdown of the album um tells a little bit about um the, the uh, significance of the songs and also gives some insight on like the particular broadcast uh that was going on at the time who presented it who produced it it's kind of just a nice little historical portal that you can read as you listen to the album and then all of the records come with the classic Apple labels and of course you get the full Apple on the main side and then on the other side you have the Apple cut in half 
I uh, do plan on spinning this and on air back to back so I can get the full effect of uh, perhaps, I think this is all the Beatles BBC output. I don't know if there was anything left out of volume two because that was kind of like an attempt just to kind of gather up whatever else was left. Uh, but regardless, I am very excited to give both of those albums a spin and also very glad to uh, have a nice dead mint copy of this right here. Beatles live at the BBC. Alrighty, another Amazon price drop this time around. Um, I remember a little while ago, I came across a used copy of this album at a record store, and I didn't snag it for whatever reason, whether it was finances or whatever. Uh, but luckily, I managed to get a completely sealed version of this album at the same price that the uh, record store was selling it used. So uh, I am talking about... The Doors, Weird Scenes Inside the Gold Mine. Uh, this is a compilation which came out back in 1972, so this was a year after Jim had passed. Um, the cool thing with this compilation is that you do get your occasional, you know, uh, flavor of hits, I guess you could say. So you get Break On Through, um, you get L.A. Woman... Riders on the Storm. So you get some standards, but for the most part, a lot of the stuff is deep cuts. So you get things like Shaman's Blues, Peace Frog, Blue Sunday, um, Take It As It Comes, Maggie McGill. Um, you also get two uh, non-album B-signs, which appeared on the singles. Uh, you get um, Who Scared You and You Need Me, Don't Go No Further. So it's a rather interesting but cool uh, compilation to have. Uh, features some really nice watercolor artwork here, which looks great. Opens up, you have some liner notes on this side, and you get a picture of the band, which looks cool. I'm not going to take the records out because they're in paper sleeves, and I don't want to just scuff them. But I will show that uh, they are on the uh, early 70s Butterfly Electra label. And this was also mastered by Doug Sachs. So, um... I think we'll be in for quite the pleasurable listening experience, and I'm very glad to have this album in my collection. The Doors, Weird Scenes Inside the Gold Mine. So I actually um, received another record with that Doors album that you just saw, uh, but upon opening it uh, from the cardboard packaging, I noticed something was off. Um, it looked as if the shrink wrap was like slid off and then slid back on, and then to cover the um, the gatefold opening, uh, it was covered with packing tape, which completely sealed the album shut, and then I wasn't even going to attempt to peel off the packing tape, because that would have just damaged the cover. Um, and I bought it brand new from Amazon, so I don't know what the hell was going on with their uh, facilities, uh, but I sent it back, no hassle, and they sent me another one as a replacement, because I still wanted the album, uh, and I got it within two days, and I got a much better copy today, so that's excellent. Uh, which album am I talking about? It is yet another compilation. Uh, this is Farner, 40, uh, 40 hits from 40 years. Uh, this came out back in 2017 to commemorate the band's 40th anniversary. It's a decent two LP uh, set, which covers all aspects of the uh, band's career. You have the early classic lineup from the first two albums, all the way through Head Games 4, Age of Provocateur, um, Inside Information, as well as covering pretty well the um, the later stuff that Farner's been doing with the uh, rejiggered lineup. Um, comes with a nice kind of semi-matte, semi-glossy kind of cover. So you can see the design there is glossy. And then we have a pretty cool picture of Mick Jones there on the backside, who has been there through it all. Comes with a nice gatefold sleeve uh, with various pictures of the various lineups and members. And then here's a pretty cool live shot of Nick there, along with some credits. No inserts, unfortunately, which is kind of a letdown. It would have been cool to have like a written, you know, essay or liner notes to go with this to kind of go a little bit more in depth, but can't have it all. Um, I'm not gonna take the record out because it's in a paper sleeve and I don't want to scuff it, uh, but I will show the labels though, which is in a die cut paper sleeve, which will not live very long. It'll be in a nice anti-static sleeve. Um, this features the old school Atlantic label there, but it's kind of rejiggered to kind of go with the color scheme of the compilation. So it's like black, silver, and red, which is really, really nice. I like how they went that extra mile. And um, yeah, I'm still growing my Farner collection. I do have 
the first four albums. I know I have some other grounds to cover with some of the 80s stuff and some of the more recent stuff that they've been doing. There's vinyl releases of some of their newer live albums and such. Uh, but this will stand uh, pretty well as a cool compilation to have in my Farner slash vinyl collection. Farner 40. You guessed it, another Amazon price dropped. This dropped to around $18, which um, is a rather good price considering what it goes for, which is normally at times twice that, sometimes maybe around the higher end of the 20s. Uh, this is Kansas Mask. Uh, this is the third album to come out from the band. Um, I would say this is a rather landmark uh, album for them because you get tracks like Icarus, Born on Wings of Steel, Child of Innocence, Mysteries and Mayhem, The Pinnacle. I mean, this is just a really, really solid album from these guys. Um, this is the Friday Music uh, version, which came out back in 2013. They've been putting out all of the Kansas albums, and they do sound fantastic, I must say. Uh, you get the back cover here with various pictures of the band. Hope you guys can catch that. I know it's a little dark. There you go. There's some light. Comes with a gatefold sleeve, uh, which what you see here in the gatefold would have been the um, the printed inner sleeve that was featured with the original. So they uh, went ahead and made it a gatefold, which is nice. Makes for deluxe packaging. Comes in a uh, plastic sort of uh, inner sleeve here. And we have the record itself, which is featured on the classic old school Kirshner label there, which looks nice. Uh, pressed at RTI, um, this thing just feels beautiful. I mean, when it comes to RTI and their pressings, they have a feeling to their albums. It's like a rounded kind of edge to their records, and it's just absolutely nice um, to feel. It just feels really, really nice. And this was also mastered uh, by Ron McMaster. Um, he does, I would say, most of the Kansas Friday music stuff um, alongside Kevin Gray. And... Um, so far, I mean, between both the McMaster and the Kevin Gray stuff, everything sounds fantastic, and I have no doubts that this will be a, uh, an amazing sounding pressing Kansas mask. Alrighty, back to the compilations. Uh, this particular record that I received today is one that I pre ordered a little while ago back in December during Christmas time. Um, this is actually the first compilation that I have on vinyl within my collection of this particular band. And uh, when I saw what it looked like and what it resembled, um, I knew I really had to go for it while the moment was hot. Um, I am talking about Kiss World, the best of Kiss. Uh, this is a 2LP compilation which covers the band's entire career. Um, decent track selection overall. My only gripe is that um, they didn't include any songs from the first two albums, uh, which is kind of shameful because how can you miss tracks like Hotter Than Hell, Deuce and Strutter, but instead you get I'm a Legend Tonight. Can't really get these things too right. Um, but nonetheless, um, it's a decent collection overall. I'm not bitching about it. Um, y you do get, you know, your I Was Made For Love and Use, Detroit Rock City, Heaven's on Fire, uh, Tears Are Falling, Shout It Out Loud, Christian 16, Psycho Circus. I mean, you get a very decent track uh, selection overall, so it's not too bad. And I love that they included Modern Day Delilah and Hell or Hallelujah from the more recent albums. Um, this is a gatefold sleeve, so you have a picture of the band in Central Park back in 74. And then you get the songs and the uh, songwriting credits. I'm just going to showcase one of the records. Um, they kind of look more or less the same, and also they're in these paper sleeves, and I don't want to like scuff them anymore. Or scuff them, God forbid. I've been very careful taking these out and just investigating them. Uh, this is pressed on a beautiful piece of like marbled yellow and red vinyl, which looks absolutely stunning. And this is why I pre-ordered this thing when it was first announced. Um, this particular variant is dubbed the End of the Road Edition, which is currently, I believe it's only available on youdiscovermusic.com. Um, overall, um, this compilation has had a very interesting release history. Uh, this first came out back in 2017 
over in Europe uh, when the band was touring at the time. So this was kind of released to kind of hype up the tour a little bit. And then they just released it here in the States um, back in January on CD initially to kick off the end of the road tour. And then they just did the vinyl version um, on Friday, March 29th, uh, which was when I saw them in Philly. And uh, now very, very glad to own this really nice piece of colored Kiss Wax and uh, Limited as well. Kiss World, the best of Kiss. Alrighty, so today was a very good mail day, uh, especially for the hard rock and heavy metal genre. Um, the first record that I'm going to show uh, is the first one that I purchased out of the two albums I'm going to show in this clip. Um, I initially saw this listed on a website called elusivedisc.com, and it was marked down uh, on sale uh, for a price that I thought was really justifiable considering uh, what entailed with it. And then I calculated the shipping costs, and just for the sake of searching out for the best deal possible, I then went on to Discogs, and I checked out all the listings for this particular pressing, and I found a seller that was just selling it slightly cheaper than what Elusive was asking for along with shipping costs, so I ended up getting just a couple dollars less than what Elusive Disc would have asked for, but regardless, it's in my hands, and I'm very happy to own it in my collection. Uh, this is On Stage by Rainbow. This is the band's first live album, which came out back in 1977. Uh, this was recorded um, during the tour for Rainbow Rising, which is a phenomenal uh, Rainbow album. And uh, this live album is absolutely killer because you do get versions of Kill the King, Man on the Silver Mountain, Catch the Rainbow, um, Green Sleeves. And then you also get a version of Deep Purple's Mistreated, which is absolutely great. Um, this particular pressing was done by a label called Wax Cathedral back in 2013. Um, I believe this is limited uh, to how many, I am not sure, but this is a beautiful package. Uh, don't know if you really can tell on camera, but um, the gatefold sleeve here is of a really nice thick heavy-duty cardstock. <clears throat> you have a nice gatefold here, uh, which features various pictures of the band in action, which looks great. And then you also get a little insert in here as well of more photographs of the band doing their thang, which is nice. And the records come in these... Uh, MoFi-esque uh, rice paper inner sleeves, and then the vinyl itself, which was also pressed at RTI, which is outstanding, uh, is pressed on a sort of um, kind of, I guess you could say maybe teal, turquoise colored vinyl, which looks really, really vibrant. Uh, this looks absolutely sharp, and um, I don't have um, any Rainbow Live albums um, and I think this is the second album in my Rainbow uh, vinyl collection. I definitely do need to uh, fulfill that part of my collection and get more of their stuff. And I definitely plan on doing so. Here is the other LP as well. And uh, yeah, just an absolutely great find. Um, I wasn't really seeking this out for a long time. It was just kind of just seeing what was out there on the internet. And... Um, who knows? You never know what you'll stumble across. So I'm very happy to have this. And then the other one was kind of a um, impromptu purchase. Um, I had some points built up with um, with bullmoose.com. When basically the way that it works is, let's say if you get like 15 points from all the purchases that you make, whatever item that you get that equals up to about $15 or less, you can get that item for half off. Um, so I saw this particular record and I was listening to them to this particular band at the time and uh, And I realized that I did not have this album in my collection and with my points I ended up getting it for like ten dollars, which is not too bad shipping was three bucks and the kicker is um, I had actually sent back um, an album that um, was uh, wrong wrongfully listed on their website, so they gave me uh, store credit and it essentially covered both the price of the album at half price and the shipping, so I didn't really have to pay anything out of pocket for it, so that was really cool. I am talking about the classic Ride the Lightning by Metallica. This is the band's second album. 
Um, you got some great standards on this, such as For Whom the Bell Tolls, Fade to Black, Creeping Death, the title track. Um, just an absolutely classic Metallica album. Uh, this is the um, remaster from 2016. Um, overall, the 2016 uh, remasters, along with uh, all the other remasters that have come out since then, um, sound very good, so I have very high expectations for this. You get a little download card here, and then you get an insert with all the lyrics, so you can sing along. And then you get uh, pictures of the band here. And then... Uh, the vinyl itself, which has a nice custom black label with blue text, which is kind of a cool color combo. Pressed over at Palace and mastered by uh, Chris Bellman. So um, with all that right there, you have an absolutely uh, killer vinyl product. And major bang for the buck, considering the quality of these uh, vinyl reissues that Metallica has been doing as they've been remastering the catalog, um, it is absolutely essential bang for your buck. Metallica's Ride the Lightning. So recently I delved into the Amazon warehouse listings and I came across one particular record that was being sold for $11 used like new. So I decided to pull the trigger on it and um, I did not regret it actually. Um, upon receiving it, I opened it up just to see what exactly the case was, if it was as described. Just a few nicks in the cover, uh, but overall, like, the vinyl is, like, mint, and it's such a cool, cool release. Uh, this is the Miami Pop Festival, uh, from the Jimi Hendrix Experience. Uh, this chronicles the band's performance at the Miami Pop Festival back in May of 1968. Uh, this particular release came out back in 2013. Uh, it is a 2LP set. Got a cool gatefold cover there of the band in action. And then like all uh, Hendrix uh, vinyl releases recently, you do get the booklet here, which has all kinds of photos and a write-up talking about the show, putting you right in the context of the time. Two LPs, like I said, and of course they come in the uh, rice paper inner sleeves that bear the quality record pressings logo, so you obviously know exactly where this was pressed. Um, but yeah, this vinyl looks absolutely gorgeous. I mean, if anything, maybe this was played once or never. I mean, maybe it was returned just for the sake of the cover, just maybe having just a few couple of small dings in the corners. Uh, but, I mean, it's not enough to drive me to, like go crazy about it i mean yeah i'm all for the quality of both the media and the sleeve itself but um but if it's like minuscule i mean i'm just i'm just happy to simply have it um showcase the other record here and these uh this was um also mastered by um bernie grunman so i'm sure this is going to be a absolutely wonderful sounding release and yet again, just another great uh, Hendrix live release to have. Um, it's been a while since I last purchased some Hendrix vinyl, uh, so I figured this would be a good place to start. I know I have to get a couple of other, maybe, I think there's one posthumous studio album I have to get and a couple of live things, but slowly but surely, the uh, Hendrix collection is becoming more up-to-date, and uh, with the inclusion of this particular release, it's another step ahead. Jimi Hendrix Experience Miami Pop Festival. Alright, so these next two albums I'm going to show you guys are ones that I picked up with my Discover cashback bonus, uh, which was redeemable through Amazon, so I did not have to pay a penny out of pocket for these uh, two particular releases. Um, right off the bat, they are ACDC albums. Uh, one of them is one that has filled a pretty big gap in my collection, and then the other one was a pretty decent price drop, and I'm going to start with the gap that was filled. Uh, this is... 1978's Poweridge. Um, this is very much an underrated album in the ACDC catalog. Uh, it's one that kind of goes under the radar in most cases. Um, you get some fantastic songs on this album with uh, Rock and Roll Damnation, Riff Raff, Sin, excuse me, Sin City, and Gone Shootin', which is one of my favorites. Um, just an all-around classic early ACDC album. Um, in terms of the 70s stuff, both studio and live official releases, 
uh, this was all that I needed to really complete, you know, the early Bon Scott stuff. So I'm pretty much up to date. Um, like all ACDC reissues, they come with the uh, printed inner sleeves here, uh, which gives you lots of pictures and liner notes talking about the time period, giving you a little insight on what was going on at the time. And then you also get the, um, the custom label bearing the ACDC logo which looks quite nice. So, very glad that I finally have this in my collection. Um, I had been wanting to get this for quite a long time, and I don't know why I waited until now to do it, but, uh, you know, as a collector, some things just kind of escape your radar, and they come back, and sometimes it's just like, you know, it's about time, and uh, that was definitely the case with this album, so I'm very happy to have Power Ridge finally. And then next is the price drop. Uh, this dropped to around $15 recently. Um, it's been at that price for a while, and I didn't pull the trigger on it quite yet. Um, I just kind of wanted to wait. I thought maybe it would go a little lower, but it seemed like it was stalled right at this price point, which was about $15. Uh, it is actually the band's latest studio album, and that is rocker bust uh which came out back in 2014 um i have a lot of fond memories for this album because i became more of an acdc fan within like freshman going into sophomore year of high school so this was like 2012 and this was the first album that had come out where myself as a fan i was really able to enjoy and dig into um i bought the cd version when it first came out um, looking back, I really should have bought this because you actually got a CD version of the album with the vinyl version, but that's a whole other point. Um, the cover has a nice lenticular cover. See how it kind of like bursts out, which is a cool effect. And, um, and you got some cool tracks on this too. Um, the title track, Play Ball, Rock the Blues Away, Sweet Candy, Rock the House. I mean... When it comes to ACDC, you know exactly what you're getting, so you really can't be skeptical on it. Um, this does come in a gatefold sleeve, and it says, In Rock We Trust. Uh, you do also get a um, nice booklet uh, with this album, which has pictures of each of the guys and little bits of, uh, of song lyrics, which is really nice. Really nice shots here. And then, of course, uh, this album was dedicated to uh, Malcolm Young, who had unfortunately uh, was diagnosed with dementia at the time when this album was kind of being put together. So they got uh, Stevie Young to step up to the rhythm guitar, uh, which I believe is Angus and Malcolm's nephew, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong, I do apologize. Keeping it in the family, which I think is right when it comes to ACDC and the uh, and the Young Brothers. Uh, printed inner sleeve here. And I'll showcase the vinyl. And it comes on a nice kind of black and silver Columbia label, which looks really old school and also really like aesthetically pleasing. Looks absolutely great. And, um, yeah, I'm really excited to, um, re-experience this album, uh, with, with older ears. Um, it's been some time since I had last listened to this. Um, I want to say last time I played it from start to finish was when I first got it in 2014. And then I saw the tour and I think I may have listened to a couple tracks here and there, but I'm very excited to revisit this album once and for all. ACDC's Rock or Bust. So I think this record that I'm going to show you in this clip takes the gold for the biggest Amazon price drop that I've witnessed so far this year. Um, this album is one that I have been aware of for quite some time. It was not necessarily on my radar. Um, I remember when it came out just a little over a year ago and I had heard a couple tracks off of it. And I did enjoy what I heard, um, but I wasn't like in a rush to pick it up when it first came out. I just heard the songs and thoroughly enjoyed it and then just kind of moved on from there. So I just um, curiously searched up on Amazon to see if this was listed. And uh, when I came across the listing and I saw it listed at the astonishingly low price of $7. That's right, you heard me, $7. 
I had to go ahead and jump on it while I could, and it was only after I placed my order, when it was at the $7 price point, that it had shot back up to its original price of $30. So that just goes to show, guys, when you see a deal as sweet as that, you need to jump on it and don't waste any time whatsoever. This is Nick Hodgson, Tell Your Friends. Now, Nick Hodgson is one of the founding members and former drummer of a band called the Kaiser Chiefs. Uh, they're based out of Leeds in England, and they are perhaps one of my top favorite uh, modern rock bands. And uh, during uh, Nick's tenure with the Kaiser Chiefs, he was also their primary uh, songwriter. So I've always enjoyed his um, songwriting stylings, and I am most certain that I will find a lot of enjoyment with this uh, debut solo effort of his. Um, the uh, cover comes in a nice, vibrant, colorful sleeve. Nice textured cover as well. Here is the back side. <coughs> Excuse me. Allergy season has really gotten the worst of me lately. <clears throat> comes with a nice uh, art print here. There's Nick. And then we get a uh, printed inner sleeve with pictures of Nick in the studio because he indeed played all of the instruments on this record. And then you also get all the lyrics on this side as well. Now we're gonna get to the big surprise with this pressing. And I had only found out about this when I actually opened up the package and saw the record and then I saw this, uh, this hype sticker on it. And what really got me curious was the limited edition clear vinyl a statement on the sticker because I was not expecting that and it did not say that on the Amazon listing so the record is indeed impressed on clear vinyl and it's funny because earlier today because I knew I was expecting this record today um, I went on Discogs and just searched up what vinyl pressings were out there for this album uh, just to see what was there and see if there was perhaps the likeliness that I would receive something rather unique. And from what I understand, uh, there's a standard black vinyl pressing, and then there was also a indie retailer pressing. Um, not quite sure if this is the indie retailer version or this is just something completely different. Um, it is rather cool to own, and just to think that I got this limited uh, edition version of this album for only $7 is uh, is absolutely worthwhile. And it's that's one of the great things about collecting is that sometimes, depending on the situation, you never know what you're going to get. Nick Hodgson, tell your friends. So while in the process of ordering and receiving all the stuff that I wanted from this year's uh, Record Store Day, um, I stumbled across this release that, yes, I was obviously aware of, but I didn't go after it uh, when it came out as part of last year's Record Store Day. And I figured for the price, uh, for 6 bucks, I thought, might as well, why not? Um, this is a 12-inch from Courtney Barnett, um, which includes the songs uh, City Looks Pretty and Sunday Roast. Um, now, when Record Store Day happened last year, um, it was just leading up to the release of Courtney's second album, which was called Tell Me How You Really Feel. And um, the two songs featured on this 12-inch single are songs that are featured on the album. And considering I already pre-ordered the album, um, I kind of at first didn't see the need to have this. Uh, but I figured, why not? I mean, the songs on here are solid, so I figured if I want to give them a listen and just simply have it in my collection, why not? Um, it does feature a picture of uh, Courtney on the cover and a nice blue uh, background here on the back with handwritten song titles. Comes with a printed inner sleeve with all of the lyrics to the songs on this side. And it also comes with, uh, if I can get it out carefully, handwritten center labels here with a nice blue center label there on the flip side but yeah like I said I figured for six bucks why not considering it's a 12 inch single and also just a really cool piece of vinyl to have in my uh, Courtney Barnett collection so I am very very happy to own it city looks pretty Sunday roast from Courtney Barnett all right, so I found myself in the area near where I do uh, my record store vlogs at, um, at the Rock Shop. Um, I went over there to do a vlog that you'll be seeing in the upcoming weeks, and I also stopped over at the um, 
Books a Million location that I used to work at within the early part of this year, uh, mainly to go pick up a PA system that had been sitting in their back room for years. And um, they wanted it out of their hands, and they were willing to give it to me for free of no price whatsoever, which was very generous. Uh, but while I was there, I figured I'd take the uh, time to catch up on anything that uh, I may have missed since I was gone. Uh, mainly a lot of the music magazines, uh, because I remember when I was there, we got in a whole plethora of cool magazines. Uh, we got a lot of the uncut, you know, artist uh, magazines, prog magazine, planet rock, rock candy, things like that. So I was mainly just seeing what was there and what I could, you know, stock up on. And then, of course, to see what the vinyl situation was looking like. And I saw this particular record on the New Arrivals um, rack. And I had just signed up with the discount card that gets you 10% off everything. And then I had a $5 voucher. So I essentially ended up getting this record for a mere... $13 and for that price I thought that was absolutely justifiable and that is John Denver's greatest hits um, is John Denver a guilty pleasure I don't know if he's worthy of having that label because I mean the man was a brilliant songwriter uh, but it just goes to show as much as I'm a big prog head and I'm into all you know the nice hard hitting complicated stuff um, I do like to mellow out um, classic compilation which came out back in 1973 you get leaving on a jet plane take me home country roads rocky mountain high um all those classic songs that i'm sure you've heard many many times back in the day uh this is a recent reissue that has come out i think just this year actually i remember i saw this uh pop up on amazon and i saw it at a record store once and i was like wow this came out uh comes with a nice uh printed inner sleeve there's a picture of John there, and on the other side we have a little write-up with uh, song uh, credits and such. And it also comes on nice heavyweight black vinyl, along with the uh, classic orange RCA label. Uh, John Denver is an artist that uh, my girlfriend and I bond over a lot, so if anything... I'll probably end up listening to this album with her since she likes him so much. So it'll be a fun, cute little listen. John Denver's Greatest Hits. And then next we got in some mail. Um, this was a big Amazon price drop right off the bat. Three LPs for $11. Think about that. Three LPs, $11. You cannot beat that. This is <clears throat> Deep Purple. It is called From the Setting Sun in Vakken. Uh, Vakken is a um, heavy metal festival that's held over in Germany. Uh, this was back in 2015. Uh, so I, this was right around the time that they released the Now What uh, studio album. Um, you get some classic uh, purple tracks on here. You get Highway Star, Into the Fire, uh, Strange Kind of Woman, um, Perfect Strangers, Black Knight Hush, you get all that stuff. And then you also get things like Vincent Price and Hell to Pay, which are off of the then uh, latest album, Now What? Um, comes in a nice uh, gatefold sleeve here with various pictures of the band at the festival. And I'll just showcase one of the records because they're all in uh, basic white um, paper sleeves and I don't want to scuff up anything. But all of them come with this custom label, which is nice. And I don't have any newer modern Deep Purple Live albums in my collection. So for the astonishingly low price that I snagged this for, I thought this was a very good place to start. Deep Purple from the Setting Sun in Valken. All right, so this right here was a impromptu purchase that I did not see myself making, but I'm really glad that I did in hindsight. Um, so... As of filming this clip, this past Friday before Easter, um, there was a new Rolling Stones compilation that came out called Honk, uh, which is another run-of-the-mill kind of compilation which covers 71 up into the present day. And where I work at, we did get some copies in and it looked great, uh, but I was just kind of like, you know what, I'm just going to hold off for now. I'll pick it up sometime down the road once I can get my discount. Um, but then I was on their Instagram page uh, this morning, the Stones Instagram page. 
and I clicked on a link where you can like purchase copies of it and I saw this option come up and I was quite curious on it so I went online on the retailer's website to see if it was available at the store near where I live and turns out it was so I decided to get myself ready for work a little early because uh, I have to go to work after I film this clip and uh, swing by my local Target and pick up the limited edition translucent blue vinyl version of the Rolling Stones honk. Um, you get all your standard uh, stone stuff here. You get your Start Me Up, uh, Brown Sugar, Miss You, Tumbling Dice, Angie, It's Only Rock and Roll, all that stuff. Um, comes in a nice gatefold sleeve with all kinds of pictures of the band. The color scheme uh, kind of reminds me of that um, that one compilation which came out like in the early 90s called Jump Back, the best of the Rolling Stones, like 71 to 93. Uh, perhaps this is a updated version of that. Um, you get uh, printed inner sleeves here which has the list of all the songs on the particular LP that you're listening to along with various publishing and writing credits. And then we get to the vinyl itself. I'm just gonna show off one because I don't want to potentially scuff up these albums. And pretty much you, you'll get the idea of what the other one's gonna look like just by looking at the one. Nice piece of blue vinyl there. Not really translucent. Um, it's kind of not opaque-ish, but kind of close to it. Uh, but it does look nice and it's also pressed very, very well and it looks very sturdy. Uh, so I'm very glad that I decided to uh, pull the trigger on this. I had actually had some stuff on order on Amazon, um, some Amazon like price drops and such, and I actually went ahead and canceled those just so I could pick this up because you can't necessarily get everything. I kind of had to pick and choose my battles in this case, and between what I was going to end up purchasing and the stones, I kind of like the stones a little bit more. So very glad that I have this piece of limited edition vinyl in my collection, Rolling Stones Honk. All right, so this next trick and I'm gonna show you guys is a rather intriguing one that has caught my eye fairly recently. Um, I was on Amazon one day and I saw that a link for this release dropped and there was a pre-order link uh, to when it was supposed to be uh, released in like late March. And so I placed a pre-order on it, but then it seemed as that date came and went, uh, the, the release got back ordered week after week after week. Uh, but then I saw recently that um, bullmoose.com was selling it and they had it available so I figured I'd order it from them thus I have this rather interesting Pink Floyd record now in my collection and that is this right here this is called broadcast in Rome Italy May 6th 1968 so this is a radio broadcast uh, of the band's performance at the first international European pop festival that was held at the uh, Piper Club over in Rome back in 1968. Uh, this was just before the release of Softs Full of Secrets. So at this point, they're still doing all of like the classic, you know, early, you know, Sid era, early Softs Full type stuff. Uh, you have Astronomy Domini, Interstellar Overdrive, set the controls for the heart of the sun, and there's a little bit of an interview with Roger Waters. Um, I'm not certain if this is the entire performance. If anything, this is all that was broadcasted over the radio. Um, this is a rather decent sounding recording. Um, this has been heavily bootlegged for years, and I've heard YouTube clips of this, and it sounds uh, pretty fantastic for you know recording and broadcasting standards. Now, this is not really a bootleg and but it is not official so this is kind of an unofficial release and I think it's one of those cases where the copyrights you know expired and now this recording is available for anyone to put out under their own imprint so in this case uh, this was put out by a label called Supernaut Records over in the EU and apparently according to the back I don't know if you can see the bottom there it says that it's limited to 500 copies um, I don't know how true that is. Um, I managed to snag this for about 25 bucks, so I figured for how limited it is, um, it's pretty good value. But then again, is it really limited to 500? I don't know. So it comes with a uh, cover of the uh, Colosseum over in Rome. And then we have a uh, picture of the band playing live. I don't think this photo is taken from the actual show that this record 
um, is taken from uh, because there's video footage of them at this festival that's on the earlier set. And while looking at the footage in this photo, it just does not match. But it's still a cool live shot. I don't think I've seen that anywhere else aside from this, um, the back cover of this record. Uh, comes on black vinyl. I'm not going to take it out because it's in a paper sleeve and I don't want to scuff it. Uh, but it does come with a rather basic um, center label, just stating the name of the release and the band's name there. So as an early snapshot of the band, uh, right before Saucer Full of Secrets came out, and them still evolving from the Sid Barrett period into what would become the four men uh, Floyd lineup that everyone pretty much knows and loves and associates the Floyd with, uh, this is a rather interesting document to have, and I'm very glad that it is in my collection. Pink Floyd's broadcast in Rome 1968. Okay, so this next record I'm going to show you guys is one that I picked up with a Amazon gift card that I got from my parents this year for Easter. Yes, you're never too old for Easter gifts when you're in your early 20s. Um, I had put a pre-order on this uh, this year uh, when the link dropped, but I ended up canceling it uh, simply because I had picked up a whole bunch of other things around the same time and I didn't want uh, it all to amount to a point that I was kind of uncomfortable at in terms of the cost and everything. So I kind of just held off for now. Um, and I knew that it was going to be around um, for a while. It's not a limited edition kind of thing. So I knew it was going to be there. Uh, so the timing was right, I thought, to pick this up. And very glad that I did because it does fill a hole in my collection. Uh, this is Jethro Tull, This Was. This is their first album. This is the new uh, 50th anniversary edition, uh, which features the Stephen Wilson stereo remix. Uh, he's been doing a fantastic job uh, remixing the uh, Jethro Tull uh, catalog in stereo and surround sound. Um, they do, like, kind of book-style CD, DVD configurations where you get the album remix and a whole bunch of... Um, extra live studio material, which are absolutely fantastic. I'm, one day I'm going to do a video uh, talking about these Jethro Tull reissues, and I'll show some examples off. Uh, but anyways, I'm going off on a tangent. Um, in terms of this album itself, uh, you get things like My Sunday Feeling, Dharma for One, A Song for Jeffrey, Beggar's Farm. Um, this is just classic early Tall stuff here. Comes in a nice kind of shiny, glossy uh, sleeve here. Here's the back cover. There's the guys. This was the sole album to feature guitarist Mick Abrahams until Martin Barr joined the band and pretty much became the uh, permanent guitarist for at least 40 plus years or so. Like all Tall reissues, it uh, does come with a nice uh, booklet, which is kind of an adapted version of the book that you get with the uh, CD, DVD super deluxe sets so you get all kinds of liner notes talking about the time frame you get various live shots from the time frame just absolutely insightful and a great historic piece so you can kind of get your mind wrapped around what was going on at the time that the album was being made absolutely wonderful stuff and then we get to the vinyl itself which is in a nice polyline sleeve Kind of replicates the uh, the pink chrysalis label there, which kind of looks reminiscent to a pink island label. Uh, pressed over at the optimal uh, pressing plant in Germany. No indication on who mastered uh, the tall stuff, but I believe it's in-house uh, ma mastering engineers. And to be honest, the, the pressings themselves sound great, and I think a big part of that comes down to how the remixes are done. Um, Wilson does not take any liberties with the remixes that he does, whether it's for Jethro Tull, Yes, or King Crimson. Uh, they're all fantastic stuff, and uh, this is an album that I am very, very proud to own. Jethro Tull, This Was. So there you go. That is my vinyl haul covering the records I got from March and April of this year, 2019. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. See you guys in the next video, and most importantly, keep the record spinning.